that. Oh, hey, no problem. Honestly, that was totally my fuck up. I, uh, uh, it, and that's kind of the problem I get when I do a lot of these podcasts is that uh, um, a lot of these guys are all, all these male or female fighters or anybody I'm interviewing that can be across the world. So I always have to like keep in mind, okay, hey, you know, I'm in Eastern Cent- Central Time, so uh, it can be a bit of a challenge. But uh, here we are, so let's get it going here. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> but uh, hey everyone, um, I'm with uh, UFC middleweight Zach Cummings, and uh, welcome to the show, man. All right, man. Appreciate for having me on. That's good, man. And uh, first off, congrats on your uh, your win off of uh, I'm going to say his name, Decario. I probably said it wrong, but uh, we know yeah, who, we know who we'll we're go talking with that. about. <laughs> Alessio, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We know we all know uh, who the loser was. So, <laughs> oh no. But um, yeah, so uh, yeah. Anyway, since uh, since your last fight, uh, what have you been up to lately? I uh, just spending some family time, you know. So I, uh, you know, I, I own my gym back home. So I came back and you know did, done some coaching. Uh, just got to spend some time with the family. I actually, literally just got back from the lake, did some paddle boarding and, and stuff, and hanging out. But uh, yeah, I actually thought I was going to be able to get back in next weekend and, and get a fight, but. Yeah. Uh, they, ended up, they ended up going with a different opponent, which is fine. So uh, I do want a fast turnaround. But yeah, just going to kind of, uh, you know, training some, but just kind of relax a little bit, get some family time, trying to make up for uh, some of that that lost time with me traveling and being gone. So it's just kind of been nice. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and does that, uh, I, actually, you answer one of my questions right away. Um, so yeah, when you're preparing for fights, it, is it kind of a, uh, a thing that a fighter kind of self selfishly has to do to kind of separate family from training. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, here in Kansas city, you know, I mean, I, in the mornings I can go down to one of our other gyms where we have, uh, basically all our pros kind of can converge and, and practice that in the morning, but I run my gym in, in the, in the evening. So like, I always kind of have that coaching role going on. So for me like to get out to Denver to factor X to my other team is, I could just be allowed to like be an athlete and stuff. Plus, you know, I get away from the family and uh, just kind of clears your head. Um, it kind of, yeah, allows me to clear my head. Just be an athlete. You don't have to worry about, you know, all the other stuff. Uh, just have my assistant coaches kind of take over everything back home. And then, uh, you know, plus just kind of being away from the family kind of gets me in that, that fighter mentality and mindset. And then, you know, almost kind of makes me, you know, want, want the victory that much more just because I know it's like taken away. And stuff, mm-hmm. so uh, kind of give up a little sacrifice and and feel that. So yeah, it's it's both. Like I love to have the the coaching and leadership from from Mark Matoya out in Denver, but then you know, like just kind of be an athlete, don't have to worry about the stuff, and then kind of just go and simplify life and just focus on training and stuff. So yeah, it's kind of a little bit of uh, of all of it. Well, that's good, man. And uh, how like how do you uh, how do you like working with like um, some of the fighters like Megan Anderson? James Krause, uh, how do you, uh, oh, like, how is awesome. that? Yeah. yeah, no, it's great. So <laughs> I had, like I said, I've got a, like, we have a ton of studs here in Kansas city. Yeah. So like, it's not like I have to go to Denver just to get good training. Cause I have some phenomenal teammates and, uh, and everything here. So it's just kind of just get away to clear my head. But I mean, man, Megan's an absolute savage. You know, she yeah. is, she trained, she works so hard. She's one of the hardest workers that we have in the, in the gym. Uh, you know, I mean, very, very good. Kraus obviously is so well-rounded, so knowledgeable. He's a great coach, uh, a great teammate. Just one of those mm-hmm. where uh, once I moved to Kansas City, me and James kind of like really hit it off and just uh, I feel like just kind of made each other better uh, for the years we've had this this long-term, uh, you know, partnership, um, you know, with yeah. the gyms, the uh, – teammate you know friends just it's just awesome man having having james here to to push me and 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 me to kind of like bounce ideas off of him has just been great you know we have other guys like you know jason witt um Mm -hmm. tim elliott i mean yeah we've got so many in here that uh that are just uh stud 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 athletes stud fighters and everything some are the up-and-comers that you guys can be hearing really really soon and we've got some guys have been in you know for a while and stuff so it's uh yeah it's definitely a very talented room whenever we're practicing here still. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I think, um, I remember hearing you say a while back in an interview, I think, uh, Anthony Gutierrez, he has some fight coming up or did it get canceled or, um, I, 
I don't know where he's at now. He, I don't know. You never know with him. He's, uh, <laughs> well, he does, he, he's in the middle of doing really well in the, uh, on the wrestling scene. Yeah. So he does all the, you know, professional wrestling stuff as well as, as on top of fighting. So right. he's training, you know, two different things. He, he's putting a lot of time in the train for his, uh, his old wrestling gig. And then he's also in the gym, you know, working hard for fights. So, I mean, he's, he's got a good, uh, uh, he's on a good win streak right now and, mm -hmm. you know, doing her thing. So I, I don't know if he's got anything set, but he's, you know, always kind of, you know, ready for, for an opportunity and stuff. But yeah, he's kind of yeah. right there juggling the, the professional wrestling with him and May. And it's, it's kind of cool to see cause he does really well at both. Well, yeah. So we'll kind of see what, uh, what happens with him, but, uh, yeah, for sure. you know, and, and with, uh, you kind of like co-hosting the, or co-owning the, the gym um is that kind of something that you have something to kind of lean back on once you like once you fully retire from the sport you can still continue to coach and and own the gym how, how is that uh how you play yeah that at yeah i mean i you know you only have so much time in this sport that's that's yeah. one thing and then you know we're we're contractors we're in, we don't have you know retirement stuff set down so it's 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 our responsibility to kind of figure that out and, uh, and stuff. So on, open up the, the, the other location. So like, you know, Krauss runs uh, one location. I opened up another one and have right. my own gym there. And, uh, we actually just opened a third with Trey Ogden is taking oh, over. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I mean, so basically we have like, uh, a triangle, you know, all around the, the Kansas city area. So people can, can train with the, the glory, the glory name and stuff, depending on where you live. But, uh, yeah, so I have my gym that, that I run and it's, it's one of the things where, you know, once I'm, once I'm done fighting, like I've got that, I have, uh, a, uh, self storage complex, you know, that I invested in and bought and, uh, and own and run. So it's just kind of being smart with the money of, you know, mm -hmm. everything that way, whenever I am done, I do have like my own, you know, built in retirement plan basically. And that's mm -hmm. kind of what, you know, what the gym is. The, the gym keeps me in the sport. I love teaching and kind of sharing knowledge and, and seeing uh, the growth of you know some of these young people coming up, but uh, yeah, it's a, it's a retirement plan for sure, and you know, and just kind of keep finding little things I can uh, do to you know build up my future. You know, if it's investments, if it's you know looking for uh, you know real estate or whatever it is. So yeah, and and I and I hear that a lot from a lot of fighters. Um, uh, some of the people I've had on the on the podcast, like they talk about. I ask them like, what well, what's your future plans when you retire? And uh, a lot of them talk about, I want to open up my own gym. I want to do this and this. And I think, I think, yeah, part of it is they want to stay in the sport. They know they need to retire, but they just can't get away. They, they love it so much that they want to continue to just train or train other people and, you know, help, help people. Well, you know, the same way someone assisted them with their, uh, with their career. Right. So it's kind of like giving back, I guess. Um, but kind of talking about what you're mentioning about uh, about how you're like investing into certain things, I think that's the smart plan for a lot of fighters because at the end of the day, you don't know what could ever happen in your career. I mean, you could have like you could have like only five fights and then a freak accident happens mm -hmm. and it changes your career forever. So I think that's why. And and another part of my statement here is that. Um, that I think that's why they're having such an issue with the fighters pay. I, I don't, I don't want to put you in the spot or anything. Um, yeah. but I know that, you know, a lot of fighters aren't happy and that's why you're seeing a lot of, uh, a lot of guys just saying, Hey, I'll fight whenever, you know, I'll take as many fights as I can because they need to get paid because you never yeah. know. It's a gamble. No, it's true. I mean, and that's why, like how me, how you said it, like, you know, fighters will fight and it's like, Oh, what are you gonna do after? It's like, Oh, I'll, I'll start and I'll start a gym or I'll open a gym. It's like, man, if you go from fighting and then you just now open a gym, like it, just like any business, I mean, you have to, it's going to take time for it to like even start turning a profit, you know, get out mm -hmm. of, you know, just whatever it is. So, mm -hmm. um, I mean, I've had, I've had my gym for, for over five years, you know, so it's like, it's, right. you know, I've got, you know, built it before it was just me. And now I've got, you know, other people run the front desk. I've got multiple, uh, instructors mm -hmm. and stuff and, you know, it's doing pretty well, but, I mean, it took, it, it takes some time to get to that point. So, uh, a, a retirement plan is almost like investing in it now, trying to build something up and that way. When I am mm -hmm. done, like it, it's set, it's ready to go. And I can just like, it's clockwork, you know, and it's already, uh, you know, it's already making a profit, you know, I'm already making a profit off of it. Uh, it, that's the thing, man. You get some of these guys, these fighters, like, I just want to be a world champion. I just want to do this. And they train, train, train. 
and they do not think about their future at all. And then, you know, they, they come up short and they never really, whatever made the money they think they did. And then like, or they just waste their money when they make it. It's like living like basically paycheck to paycheck, fight to fight. And it's yeah. rough, man. It's hard. So like I've, I've, I've always tried to like and in, instill that not that mindset with uh with the guys at my gym, you know, just kinda of make sure that they're being smart about things. But uh that's kind of the how the popular route is and it's kinda of scary because like you said, anything can happen and you can be out of the sport at any time. You know, it's got a a very short shelf life basically. But mm-hmm. uh but yeah, it's gotta be smart with, with everything you do and, and it's gonna I don't know, like fighter pay, it, it's getting a lot better. I'll give them that. Like obviously I mean, mm-hmm. I've been this, I've been in the UFC for seven years and yeah uh, yeah back then man it was rough like you had to fight multiple times a year to, to do stuff but you know yeah. I mean it's it's getting better it's not it's not up to you know some of these other sports and stuff but uh, these these top level guys are definitely getting paid and I mean some of these newer guys the contracts are being renegotiated a lot faster where it's getting oh, yeah. much better it's going to take some time to get to where we really need to be but it, it's definitely getting better and. And, you know, you can survive, you can live off, uh, off of what you're making, but you just gotta be smart with it. Absolutely. And like, uh, I, I heard about the, um, the Venom deal that UFC is going to be doing, uh, I think starting next year. Mm-hmm. Um, and what, what's your thoughts on that? Have they explained anything to you? There, I don't know anything about it. Honestly, I've, okay. heard, I've heard a few things. It's one of those where. I didn't know Venom had the money to even have a deal like this. Like I didn't know that that's, big of a company. It, exactly. That's what uh, I was thinking. What I've I've heard rumors about certain things that like, you know, because you know Venom does clothing. That's it. Like they don't do shoes. They don't do you know certain things. Yeah. But uh, so apparently, and this is this is hearsay. So I don't really know a hundred percent of how accurate all this is. But I think the contract for Reebok goes up on clothing and I think for some reason they it's like uh it's overlap so then there's like the shoe and something else uh is another year so I don't know if the Venom is signed up for the clothing for a year and Reebok still has like all the shoe stuff and then maybe they're trying to like find a company besides Reebok to kind of come in and do the stuff until Reebok's completely out of it and then go to another company I don't know exactly yeah. how this is going to work i have no idea how the payout if it's going to be less more the same as Reebok or how it is now i, I just yeah I, I really don't know too much of it um but i just kind of you know i've heard some some intelligent people who kind of are in the game you know talk about it and stuff and what they said so i, I feel like that's one reason why they went with uh with venom yeah it'll be definitely interesting what they're going to do um i mean personally i really like the Reebok look it looks really cool um but at the same time, I get it. Like, it was nice to kind of see every fighter have their own sponsors because, well, you get multiple sponsors on your short on your fight shorts. Yeah. That's like all the sponsorship that helps you with the training and et cetera, et cetera. Um, but I mean, at the same time, I kind of like what the UFC did with, and this is just me as a fan speaking. But um, as a as a fan, I really liked what they kind of did. I like the look of the shorts. Um, how everything kind of it, it looks it looks more like a. Uh, it looks more, it's more like it's a, more unified. It's just more, more unified. unified. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, instead of just kind of like whatever, Condom Depot on someone's butt and just for him, you know, or whatever it is, like uh, it, it's just kind of you know, absolutely. It, it's very structured. It's it's unified. It's uh, it, yeah, it's just, it's much better. You know, I, I think it looks a lot more professional uh, yeah. of a look. I, I will definitely say that. You know, I mean, I know, I know some people are lost out on a lot of money on the deal. Yeah. Um, but, and then also, you know, some people were probably making around what they were making without having to like really do anything and have to go out and try to find sponsors. So it's, I, I could see both sides of it. You know, some of these big name guys, I understand they lost a ton of money, but also the big name guys have a, uh, a, a pretty good social media presence. And I yeah. feel like they're still going to get those outside sponsors through that route anyways. Oh and, yeah. Uh, and, and they're just as fine. So, Oh yeah, like I've seen a lot of um, at least the female fighters. Uh, like even someone like I, I follow her on my Instagram, Jillian Robinson. I know mm-hmm. she's sponsored with Manscaped. I know Manscaped is really pushing into the UFC right now. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so I think that's I think the UFC recognizes that they're they're trying to get those sponsors in to kind of help out with the fighters. You know, a little bit of a side 
side hustling. Um, I think that uh, I think that definitely does help with some of the fighters. I mean, I, and I'm assuming that they get the free stuff anyway. Um, so that I guess that's kind of a it helps them in a way. Um, but when when it comes to the Reebok gear, so do you get to so say when you like like when you just fought recently, did you get to keep all that gear after, or how does that work out? Yeah, so I mean, basically, kind of how it works is like uh, you check in for fight week. You know, you yeah. do all that stuff, and then so they will give you a UFC Reebok bag, and it's got all kinds of clothes in it. I mean, you know, shoes, socks, underwear, workout clothes, you know, hoodies, just whatever, just all kinds of stuff. And then they also have a bag for all your corners. You know, the corners are kind of like typically one outfit kind of, you know, it's like not as much as the fighter, but like the corners will get shoes and socks and, you mm-hmm. know, whatever, shorts and a shirt and a jacket yeah. or whatever it is. So uh, you get all that stuff. And then like you have your fight kit, you know, which is what you see when you walk out um, yeah. and you keep all that stuff too. Uh, the, the USC normally tries to ask for uh, one item back. And, you know, though, that's why whenever you can see like these fighter worn stuff, whatever being sold, like that's normally what that is. So, you know, you can give like your walkout shirt, your fight shorts, okay. your gloves, whatever you could. So you kind of you typically give one item back and it's it's whatever you pick and stuff and uh, and everything. But yeah, besides that, like, you know, they, they give you they give you a bag full of gear and then uh, your fight, you know, your fight kit as well. You keep and then you just kind of have to give one thing back at, at that point. But right on right on. Yeah. Have you ever uh, have you ever given away any of your shorts to like a. Like someone that you know want, or like, have you ever got to sign them and just give them away to someone that that really wanted them? Or have you ever uh, done like that? no, I mean I've done like hats and stuff. You know the uh, I I kind of selfish. You know, like I want to keep my shorts basically for like a shadow box like thing. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Later on and stuff for like you know down my basement in the bar area or something. But uh, so sure, I normally try to like keep shorts and gloves as much as I can, and then like you know I've given some fighter from uh, walkout shirts away. Mm-hmm. hoodies you know hats and stuff like i mean I've done, I've done some of that stuff uh you know every once in a while i've given gloves away but yeah shorts for some reason i try to keep there uh, a little more i mean i don't feel like anybody wants like some bloody sweaty worn yeah. <laughs> shorts but uh but yeah i mean I, I've, I mean i've definitely given all kinds of stuff away um you know to to fans i've done giveaways on social media like there at the event i've just signed something give it to somebody so uh yeah it's kind of nice that's good, man. Um, and just kind of moving on to uh, your your recent fight. Um, obviously, everyone knows it. Um, you know, you had that guy hurt in that fight. Um, do you feel like one more punch and the guy was going to be gone? How, how do you feel? Oh, uh, I mean, uh, going it, into that round. Yeah, it's one of those where I mean, if there was one more fight, one more punch, it was it was over for sure. Yeah. Honestly, I think I think the ref even could have assessed him after the bell and still called it uh, yeah. a TKO or whatever, knock out like. Uh, it's just a, a pretty rare occasion, like for a big shot like that being yeah. right at the bell and stuff. So, but I mean, if, if he wouldn't able to like continue to fight, like they could have called it right then. And uh, you know, he finally made it back to his feet. He started working up. He fell over. He like fell into the cage. But when I went over there, once he got to his feet, you know, I kind of just you know hugged him real quick, said good fight. And he, you could tell he was still pretty out of it. But yeah, you know, so it's two things. I feel like they could have assessed him. And called it, but I also understand why they did let it go to the judges. But if I would have had time to land one more punch, like it, it would have been over and stuff. So, but. yeah, it does suck because I kind of not that it, you get that that finish taken away from you, but you just wish it's like there's been other cases where they they'll call off the fight. Like you look at the guy, he's wobbling, he doesn't know where the mm-hmm. fuck he is, and it's like, yeah, yeah no, you're done. Um, so I guess it's unfortunate that way, but do you just look at it as, well, still a win is a win. How, how did you feel about the performance? Yeah. I mean, I was a little upset with myself with the performance, you know, I just, which I get, like, I know how I fight. I know I'm like, like, I'm not a big volume guy, but I've got a lot of power. So, you know, if one lands, you know, normally does some damage, but, uh, I don't throw a ton of, of volume. Well, I've been for this fight camp, I kind of wanted to prove myself wrong, and I wanted to like throw a lot more, uh, just a lot more volume in the fight. I wanted to mix mm-hmm. mix in more, and want to kind of mix some wrestling in. And I mean, I feel like this whole training camp, I did all that stuff, and for whatever reason, I just didn't do it in the fight. Uh, I don't know. Right. I just, uh, I mean, I was like telling myself before the fight, this is what we're doing. This is a game plan. You know, between second, and third round, like I'm sitting there talking to Mark, and I was like, okay, well, let's let's rest him a little bit, like let's mix it in. I didn't shoot one time, <laughs> like I. <laughs> I don't know what my deal was. I just, 
I don't know if I was just waiting for like the one big shot, trying to like catch his timing, but yeah, uh, yeah, it's not what I wanted to do. I mean, I'm definitely happy I got the win and and got oh, back absolutely. on the end of winning. I mean, that that's huge. Uh, I hate going to the judges. I mean, I know at least I had like a big highlight deal at the end, but yeah, at this point, I'm just so happy I got a win and can go back and still kind of fix fix what I messed up with, uh, just still still being a winner. So uh, yeah, yeah, hopefully, maybe next fight I'll. I'll implement all the stuff I was wanting to implement this fight, but we'll see. Yeah. And, and I gotta ask, man, like, so I know there's a lot of fighters that probably been asked the same question with now with the, with the post uh, COVID um, Mm -hmm. fighting, but uh, you know, comparing to having a crowd and no crowd, how weird is it to fight in just an open arena or open apex? Well, yeah. Um, It really, like it really, I didn't notice too much of a difference. Uh, It was the weird part is like, before the walkout, so typically, uh, you know, you come in for backstage and like they've got mm-hmm. these black curtains. You like go through the curtains and they have an X on the ground. You just wait until they tell you to walk through, like you know, if you got the camera and stuff. So yeah. typically, you go through that curtain. You're there and like you see all the crowd and they're like yelling and stuff like that. So you kind of have this time where you can like people are talking to you, you're looking up at them and everything, and then like your song plays and you can like start walking out. Well, for this one. You know, you go through the curtain, it's literally just like a big open room, and you're like, it's super quiet. I'm just like, look at the coaches, like, well, this is strange. <laughs> but, uh, you know, once they did the walkout, got through the cage, and I mean, like, that doesn't change. Like, once you're in there, locked in there with one other person, the ref, like, you yeah. know, I, I don't really, like, look around and stuff anyways. The, uh, I mean, being a little quiet in there was a little different, I guess, but I don't think it, like, I don't think it affected the fight that much. I mean, mm-hmm. uh I don't know. I mean, the only thing I can think of is, especially with my fight, uh, and when we engaged, like, we were, like, trying to take each other's heads off. You know, it was, like, yeah. we, were throwing, we were throwing some violent stuff. Uh, but, yeah. you know, like I said earlier, like, we weren't throwing a ton of volume where it's just over and over. We're like, man, the refs kept, like, yelling us, like, to pick it up and do more. And I'm like, like, bro, I mean, if I'm throwing this stuff and a crowd's there, like, they're going to be like, oh, wow, oh, like, and stuff, and I don't yeah. think it would have been as big of a deal, but I think it was so quiet. Like, I don't know if that's one reason he kept trying to get involved, but yeah, uh, I mean, it was like, I mean, it's a a chess match where, you know, I mean, the the margin for error is very, very small. Like, when people are trying to throw that hard, and you can't, you know, you can't just mess around and just, you know, go in there all foolish. So, you know, fighting the outs, you know, whatever, foot position, cutting your angles, like all those small little things is very important before you just start engaging in, uh, and, sl- and slugging it out, but yeah. Um, so I don't know if just like it being quiet in there maybe affected him as a ref, but uh, me, a fighter wise, I don't think it's a big deal. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I think like I don't know, as fan as a fan and watching it. Um, obviously, I'm going to watch the fights tonight. Um, I actually I don't mind watching it. Like I don't mind watching with no crowd. It's nice to kind of hear what the crowd or what the what the corner uh, is saying because it's. You know, obviously, I, um, I I do train a little bit in MMA, and so when I when I see things that are going on, it's nice to kind of know like what the corner is saying. It's mm-hmm. like, yeah, like like what like or um, I'm trying to think of uh, which fight was it? I think it was with Anthony Smith when he fought uh, Glover Tashira. Yeah. And I'm thinking like, and no no disrespect to the, the corner, but I was like, what are you guys doing? You're yelling at them the whole fight. Let them fight. Like l- like settle down a little bit but it's nice to kind of hear actually yeah. be able to hear the the corner so a lot of times with the crowds i mean you can't hear what you can't hear what the corner is saying so it's yeah. like you're just seeing this guy fight like like a, and he's going berserk and you're like and you're thinking what's the corner doing doing but now that you can hear the corner it's like oh okay i see what's going on yeah. so it, it's no, nice to kind of hear what what's going on and telling them you know hey like you know whether you're on the ground and and they need you to move in a certain transition it's nice to kind of hear that it's cool yeah, I like so. I mean, as a fan, I actually prefer the no crowd. Uh, as a fan side, just same thing you said. Like you can kind of hear the corners coaching, saying a little more. Like you know, some of these fighters are like talking to each other a little bit. You kind of you pick up, you hear a little bit more of that. Pick it up. Yeah. Uh, I feel like the even like the uh, the fight itself is a little more like intimate. You know, it's one of those where it's really quiet. So like whenever they're landing punches, like I, that sound really translates over better through tv without the crowd there uh which is kind of cool it's so like you know mm-hmm. you get these people like really getting after it and stuff and like you just kind of like hear the hear the sound of the punches and the kicks landing yeah. i think you get a little bit more out of it without the crowd they're kind of like you know numbing mm-hmm. it uh and and 
kind of shutting that that sound out a little bit. So as a fan, I kind of enjoy it. I really like it, but you know, fighting wise, I don't know. It's it, I was just kind of indifferent with it, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. And um, there was another question I think they asked you in your post fight. It was something about um, physicality and. Uh, a lot of guys were like, there were some people criticizing you going into the fight against the other guy. You know, he was in, you know, in better shape. And mm-hmm. you were kind of mentioning how, like, that's not really, that doesn't, that doesn't uh, make an outcome of a fight. Like, that doesn't, For sure. you know, you don't believe that that transitions into uh, into a, a fight. Um, so, like, I guess, like, do you, yeah, so do you believe that, you know what, it doesn't necessarily mean, just because you're not in the best shape doesn't mean that internally you're 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 in better shape. Like, like how do you uh, how do you look at that? Yeah, so I'm, try, I'm trying to find I, a no, way to. No, ask you're good. It. No, yeah. I completely understand. So, like, I've yeah. always joked around saying this for years. Like, which is the yeah. same answer I gave them. I was like, abs don't win fights. You know, if they yeah. did, I'd be like, oh, and forty something or whatever. <laughs> so, I mean, that's always my joke. Uh, whenever you know, of course, like my friends or teammates or like people give me a hard time. You know, that's always it, you know, and but it's just kind of the truth um, that I don't know. It, it's weird. So like I there is an aspect of like kind of your physicality, like the look of you and, mm-hmm. you know, like, you know, correlating to, to the shape you're in. I get that. Yeah. But everybody's different. You know, like, I mean, I did everything like so I'm thinking this is years like seven, you know, seven years of my, my USC debut. I was scared that I could eat, like, wouldn't even make 170. So, like, I did yeah. everything perfect. I am training insane so hard. Like, I didn't have the gym yet, didn't have any job, or, like, all I yeah. did was just train, 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 eat extreme, like, extremely healthy. And, like, I got to, like, I mean, I look good. I mean, I was, like, but I was, like, a four-pack. I still went, like, a shredded six-pack, you know, and, like, and that was the best shape that I would ever be able to get in my entire life. And, I mean, I still had, like, you know, a little soft on the sides, just, I, I'm just built a certain way and like that doesn't mean that I'm not in shape, you know? So, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, there's, there's, even though I don't have like, you know, shredded out six pack, there's, that does not mean I'm not in shape. Like, but there's definitely a way where you like, you could see me at one point and then see me like fight time. And, you know, and you could definitely tell there's like a difference there in, in even physique. It might not be quite like shredded and like not, but mm-hmm. you could still, you can still tell a difference. And, uh, and I think there's, there's that part of it, you know, cause, uh, but it doesn't really just mean like being shredded, being, having abs, like whatever that is. Uh, but there's definitely, I mean, it's like anybody, like before, like you really start working out, like your body looks one way, you start working out, you might not be in the best shape ever. Like, you know, still people in much better shape than you, but like for you in shape, like you look a different way. So there's, there's that aspect to it, but just because you got big muscles and, you know, look like a bodybuilder does not mean that you can fight it doesn't mean that you're in shape and stuff like that so it's uh like there's some some truth to it but like i don't know like and but just for me like i can be in phenomenal shape i got great cardio and i'm I'm strong i just don't have like the physicality like look of like someone who's like this big like a meathead type (laughs) i don't know (laughs) bodybuilder feel i don't know it's it's hard to explain but i know exactly what you mean it's just Mm -hmm. uh i don't know like I'm I'm very good at uh, I guess using my my skill set and my uh, physical ability, but I know I know I don't fully look all the part. I get that, but it doesn't mean that I can't fight. Yeah, no, I I hundred percent agree with you uh, for the most part, and yeah, and and that's it. Like I mean, you look at other fighters that. You you look at them and it's not that they're in bad shape by any means. They're just but the guy that they could be fighting. It's like you look at one guy and the other guy. Like Stepe Miocic and Daniel Cormier is a mm-hmm. great example. I Absolutely. mean, Daniel Cormier can go five rounds. Um, but the only down downside to that that I see is the the real question I always had as a fan in, is what if he was in better shape. Um, how much better of a fighter could he have been? Because, I mean, you look at him and you don't think, what was this guy, a fighter? But you look at him and he goes in and he's he's screwed everybody up. Like, yeah. he's taken out everyone um, besides, obviously, John Jones. But even John Jones, he's hung in there with him. So, oh, yeah. I um, mean, and so it's, it's a thing. Look, like, I get that heavy, but, like, look at him at 205. He still looks yeah. the same, right? But And he can go five rounds. He can push five rounds hard. He's in phenomenal yeah. shape. 
Like, Absolutely. I've trained with him. It's insane. Yeah, he's another person that just, uh, yeah, I mean, like, even at 205, you know, mm-hmm. still still has the push. Still, I mean, he is an athletic dude, man. But if you look at him, it doesn't look that way at all. So, very yeah, deceiving. he's another one. Man. It's, yeah, it's very deceiving. <laughs> it's crazy. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you, but, like, you can't look at, you can't look at him and then look at someone like, uh, you know, who's like uh, Anthony Johnson. Right, just oh monstrous and scary looking. Right, uh, I mean, I don't know how many other people there that he fought, you know, that looked that way at two hundred five because they're big, shredded, uh, you know, and and still went out, did his thing, looked great, had a good push, was in shape. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just, yeah, it's hard to you can't go off looks, man. It's just, it's so deceiving. Yeah, and, and I mean, if anything, he actually has better cardio than Anthony Johnson, so that's yeah. kind of scary. Guy's in yeah. better shape. <laughs> the yeah, guy has better sure. cardio. Um, I mean, I take my coach, for example, he, uh, um, you know, when I first started training, like when I really started training MMA with him, cause I have my black belt in Shotokan oh. and, um, and when I started transitioning over, like my coach is, you know, 10 years, 15 years older than me at the time. So I was maybe 21, 22 and he's about, I don't know. So he's about maybe o- almost 20 years older than me. So he's about in his forties, a little out of shape, but he would just, Oh, he just like he'd be grappling for ten minutes straight, and I'm a I'm out of breath in like a minute and a half. Obviously, I didn't you know I you know I didn't know anything that I mm-hmm. that I know sure. now, but yeah, um, yeah, just like it just goes to show you that looks have nothing to do with it. It's it's all about the little fundamental things that uh, that you learn as you go. Um, but uh, anyway, so like uh, kind of moving on. So you, you fought a lot of tough guys like Ponzi, uh, Santiago, Santiago, Ponzi uh, you know, Gunnar Nelson. Uh, so when you went after fighting all these guys, do, does that give you confidence that you can hang in there with anyone? Oh, for sure. I mean, I've been saying I've, I've trained with world champions, you know, I've, I've, mm-hmm. I've competed with guys that are top 10 in the world. It's like, I can compete with anybody. If I show up and, uh, you know, and, and show up the best me. I mean, like, I, yeah, I can compete with the best guys in the world. Like, I can step in, but you know, you have to, you have to do everything to get to that point. But I could step in with a title shot, you know, tomorrow, and I can compete. You know, I mean, yeah. it's a very like I, I can beat anybody on any given day. Uh, I have all the tools to to win a fight. You know, now that doesn't I mean it happens all the time, but I'm definitely good enough to to compete with anybody in the world. And I and I know that, and I definitely, yeah, having those tough fights and those uh, those tough opponents. Uh, after all these years and stuff, like it's definitely helped kind of build that confidence. Yeah. Um, like I said, training with some of these world champions and stuff, like it just, uh, I, I know, like if I show up on the right day, like it, it's a winnable fight any day. Absolutely. I so, fully believe that I could be anybody in the world. So tomorrow you, you, you go in and fuck Israel, I'll sign you up, is what you're saying. <laughs> I, I, hey, I mean, I, if, I, if I show up and, I, and I'm on my game, you know, I, it's absolutely, like I can, I can, I'm so good at finding submissions, you know, I can catch anything. I've got power in both hands, like I've got good striking. Like absolutely I'm a, I'm capable of, of finishing a fight anywhere at any time. And uh you know, I'm hard to put away too. It's like I'm I'm hard out wrestle, yeah. uh I'm hard out grapple, I'm hard out strike. I mean I can get hit, but like it's hard to like really uh like rock me and phase me and stuff. So like even if I get hit, I kinda I'm still in the fight. So it's yeah. uh yeah, I don't know, like yeah, absolutely. I, mean, I, I truly think I could step up and and fight Izzy and, and still, you know, make it a hell of a fight for sure. Yeah. And, um, and I mean, that being said, uh, you know, you're, you know, you're 36. Um, so what, what, like, what's your plan? Are you still trying to make a run for the gold? Are you just fighting? Are you just taking one day by at a time? What are you, uh, what's your plans? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I'm Honestly, not saying, I'm not trying to no, call no, you gold good. here. No, for sure. no, 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 you're good. So, uh, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not stupid. I, I get, I know I'm on the, the, the ladder end of my career, right? It's just trying to figure out. It sucks whenever like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm getting in some, some decent contracts where I'm making good money. Like I'm winning fights. Uh, the body's actually like holding up being a little healthy right now. It's like, I don't know if I'm ready quite to walk away from it, but like years ago, 35 was my number. It's like, since I hit 35, I'm done. Like it just, you know, I've got no, no reason. And like, you know, 35 gets here and like I still feel pretty good like I went up to middleweight so I don't have to like kill myself with the weight cut anymore right and uh I'm just kind of enjoying things and having more fun with it right now so like I'm not I don't want to put anything on it you know it's like 
uh, yeah, would I like to like get in the, the the top fifteen guys? You know, I would. You know, if I can get top fifteen, great. Then maybe, hey, do we would go for top ten? Do we go for top five? Like, if it happens, great. But like right now, I mean, I'm just like I enjoy doing this for however long I can let you know that I yeah. have time left. And uh, but I mean, I I do know where I'm at. I know I'm like I'm right outside the top fifteen guys, and like I've, yeah. I've got all the ability in the world like step in, break into that, and then you know you win the you know you win a couple fights that you know, the right matchups, I mean, you're right up there in the, you know, in the mix of things. So, uh, it's crazy how fast it can happen if you get there. So it's one of those where I just got to enjoy it. And, but yeah, I mean, I, I still want to see what I, how far I can make it in this for sure. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, you know, a guy like, uh, you know, Cowboy Cerrone, he's, Mm -hmm. you know, I think he's around your age. Maybe he might be a little bit older, maybe not. I think we're close. I know. Yeah. I think we're around. Yeah. Pretty close. Um, are you open to like, would you rather kind of stay away from the the kind of fights that he's been getting, like getting a lot of up and comers? Um, like, are you more trying to move forward than say, yeah, I'll fight some guys that are up and coming, like uh, like an Anthony Herenda, Hen- Henendras or guys like that? Like, would you rather move more forward into the top fifteen? I mean, obviously, yeah, it's always good to be like, oh, I want to rank, you know, I want to fight someone who's ranked higher than me and always push forward. Yeah. It's not always the case, you know. I mean, sometimes it, the UFC just are like, "No, like we have this guy we want to match up with you. Like, take it or leave it." Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I got, I got no like. If you have the mindset, you could beat the, you know, the champion. You could beat the best guys in the world. Like, you mm-hmm. shouldn't be scared to to fight an up and comer or someone who's not ranked as high as you. Like, uh, I don't know. I just like going out, having fun, putting on a show. And yeah. so, I mean, whoever they want to put me against, but uh, I mean, obviously, yeah, the the goal would be to you know, to fight people ahead of me in rankings and move up the rankings and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So, but I mean, it's, it's part of the game. If you have to, especially in this COVID area, I mean, like, you know, people are falling out of fights so much. Oh like, my I God. mean, at this point, you should just be happy to get a fight and you know, like, it just work. So it, it's, it's really hard. Uh, it's so different right now of like, you know, typically I feel like they had this like plan where like, okay, these two winners are going to fight and like keep progressing through and, and up the ranks and, I feel like right now they're just trying to like keep these cards together, keep like any matchups they can get and stuff. So it's, it's hard to pick and choose right now if you want to stay active. Yeah. It, it's crazy. And I mean, uh, to elaborate on what you're saying. Yeah. Like I just looked online and like two fights off the tonight's card just got canceled because the guys tested positive. Yeah, and, crazy. uh, like I wasn't not, I was, it was not like I wasn't expecting these things to happen, but I mean, when you start getting cards and it's like two or three fights are getting called off, that's when I think, you know, shit starts getting a little nuts. Um, and uh, is that ever like a fear of yours that you're going to have a fight booked and say a month from now? And then, you know, you know, your opponent, you find out your opponent, yeah, I got tested positive and now you got to either wait longer to get that fight or. Oh, dude, like, you have no idea. Yeah. I mean, I was, I so everybody kept joking around, like, why were you laughing the whole time and smiling the whole time of the fight? I was like, I was just happy to be in there. Like, yeah. you know, I was wanting to fight in January, you know, I, I, whatever reason. Like, the, I, the, we could, the opponent they wanted didn't want to fight. And uh, mm-hmm. so I got pushed back to April. And then, you know, that's when kind of everything happened and the, all the cards got canceled. So, like, I already got canceled a couple times. And then we got this fight. And I was just so nervous, you know. Uh, I had some teammates back home kind of have some issues with, with positive testing and stuff. So like I was, I was just, I didn't know if I would be able to make it. I didn't know if I would have any coaches there. Uh, you know, I've got my opponent flying all the way in from Italy. So like, who knows what that situation's looking like. So everybody's like, Oh, you ready to fight? I'm like, bro, like I'm, I'm not even like thinking about this until I am locked in that cage with another person. So like, I figured my opponent could change or like, I might get yeah. kicked out and have to delay things. Like it was so hard to, stay focused on like a typical fight week that I, th- I think that's why I just enjoyed everything so much. I was just so mm-hmm. happy to be in there like, and actually just to do it and fight. And that's I was like, I was having a good time. I was just enjoying it. I was smiling. Yeah. Like the whole fight week was just a fun time. Cause you knew like it can go to hell at, at any moment. So yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's, it's a hard time right now, but I mean, I'm, I'm happy that the sport that I love to watch and that I love to compete in, you know, it's still on TV right now, still being able to, to put their guys mm-hmm. working. And I get, like, you know, cards and, like, we're losing fights that people really want to see. But, uh, you know, me as me as an employee, I mean, I'm, I'm really thankful and grateful that 
uh, I still have a job that I'm able to do, you know, in, in these mm-hmm. times. Yeah. And, and then that being said, um, with, I, I guess just kind of transitioning to, uh, to weight cutting, um, obviously, you know, you're middleweight right now, uh, you fought a welterweight, um, and you've moved up to welter or moved up to middleweight. So I know that it, in the past, some fighters have talked about having issues where they cut to a certain weight so long and then they move up weight and then they have a hard time keeping it on. Have you ever mm-hmm. experienced that? <laughs> uh, not really. I mean, my problem is, is I was always like, I just, my, my cuts to the weight were, they were very extreme. Like I yeah. literally walk around like 215, 220 oh, and shit. cutting down to 70. was just ridiculous. Uh, and then everyone's like, oh, you should walk around at 200. I'm like, over like the next day i'm already like 205 so like yeah. i was literally weighing it at 70 and like i would be in the fight at 205 you know then like yeah. and then as soon as you just have like regular meals for a couple of days like i'm already back to 210 so like yeah. it was you know it was it's so hard to do so like i'm still walking around the same way so i still have to cut to make the uh, middle weight but it's you know it is uh i'm walking around a little lighter like i've noticed that like you know 210 uh 210 to 12 like so i am a little bit lighter because i'm not stressing my body going down and shooting up higher okay. so uh and that's kind of the, the deal with it normally like you put all this stress that whenever it blows up it normally blows up higher than it ever was and then you right. keep doing that it's like a rubber band you know like a you, know, you stretch it and then it, it blows up it's kind of i guess the, the easiest way to explain that and then when guys like take that stress of cutting all that and pulling all that way out that you're uh your body kind of like levels itself out a little bit and you're not walking around as heavy as normal because you're not putting that stress to cut it down as much. So that's, it's definitely true. I mean, I, I still have to cut some, but it's, it's much easier. I mean, I made weight the night before weigh-ins last time in like one bath. So, uh, you know, I could diet down everything and, and it, it went really smooth like clockwork. So, um, uh, but yeah, I mean, that's, I've definitely heard that from my teammates and, and people I know that, that went up a weight class, you know, it's, so it's a little bit harder, but I, it's just so much less stress on your body that your body is able to kind of acclimate itself more and kind of level everything out. Yeah, definitely. And and I think like, you know, you see some fighters that uh, they definitely have to get, you know, they, they get to the point where I think you know they have to make that decision where you got to go up weight. Um, like you look at guys like Darren Till, obviously another middleweight mm-hmm. in your yep. division. Um, you know, he went up to middleweight. I think that was a greatest thing he he ever did because Agreed. you know Walter Way he just I think he just killed himself there um so I mean like what's the deal like why why is it that people cut so much weight just to get to a certain weight class is it just to get that advantage or what like what is it I mean I, I think some of it is old school thinking you know it's like you know a lot of that stuff came from uh because like boxers don't cut much weight like that's there but there's also the, the difference between MMA and boxing is there's like literally weight classes every few pounds in boxing. Like there's so many oh weight my classes. God. Oh, yeah. So you don't have to, you know, like you don't really have to worry about too much because, you mm-hmm. know, you can you can cut to the next weight class and you cut seven pounds, you know, whatever it is. Yeah. Right? So, so they just don't cut at near near as much weight. But right. whenever you got these 10, 20 pound differences, uh, you know, 15 or, you know, whatever these differences are, uh, it is different. And then with MMA, I feel like you have a lot more wrestlers that's in there. And, you know, back in the day before they did all the uh, all the hydration tests and stuff, like, I mean, everybody used to, like, just kill themselves cutting weight. You know, they didn't know how to yeah. cut weight. They just would just pull all this water out and, you know, then you start fighting. So with wrestling, it's like you weigh in. So, like, you straight, like, whatever, you, like, basically just murder yourself. So, like, cut all this weight. You yeah. weigh in, you get you get like an hour, and then you uh, then you compete, and then you start doing MMA, and you're like, oh wait, I have a whole day to recover. Like I can really pull all this water out and yeah. do it. And I feel like it's just kind of an old school mindset. And then as we kind of get into this, and like really kind of seeing how more of a legitimate sport, a little more science built in, uh, a lot more high mm-hmm. level nutritionists and stuff are doing it. Uh, you know, there's guys that are still cutting down, but I feel like they're doing a much safer route. And then the guys that were cutting like old dumb ways, like I feel like they're willing to go up and, and feel better and stuff. So like for me personally, you know, was I ever like getting out muscled at welterweight? Like, no, I mean, I was a, I was a big guy in there, but I was like the fights, I, the couple fights I lost, I feel like it was a speed advantage. 
it, those guys yeah. are really fast. They were able to like get in, score, and then get out of the way of my power. And it's like if I didn't finish them, it's like I was just like getting outscored and just lost right. to the judges. So, uh, you know, so then there's like you have to, you know, there's some other things to look at that, you know, like, yeah, you might be this big, strong guy, but like you're also going with these guys that aren't cutting a lot of weight that are a hundred percent all the time and they're a lot faster. So, and I feel right. that way now at middleweight. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's weight cutting is a scary thing and you know, you just got to take care of yourself for sure. Um, but, uh, I, I wanted your thoughts on the, uh, Adesanya and Costa fight. Obviously it's in your division. What's, what's your thoughts on that fight? I'm up in the air still on it. I, for me, yeah. I feel like I would not be surprised if Costa goes out there and starches him, like in the first round. Like he's a very step fast. Uh, he's just fast starter. He's a big, strong dude. Like, yeah, I, I, I could see it, but if I had to like be an intelligent pick, I would say that uh, the Adesanya is going to be able to kind of like weather the storm, uh, pit, you know, start finding the openings and he's so accurate and long that like, mm-hmm. I think he'll, he'll start being a sniper and, and start picking Costa apart, you know, as, as those rounds move on and, and go on. But yeah. uh, like, but if he went in there and just like ran through him, I, I really wouldn't be that surprised. But I mean, I'm picking Izzy, uh, you know, in like either decision or maybe, you know, if it was like a real late, uh, late fight stoppage where he just finally just kept picking at him, picking at him, picking at him. But uh, yeah, it's, I'm still kind of up in the air. I'm not, not quite on the Costa hot, or Costa hot like hype train yet. But I was really impressed with his Romero fight. So yeah, I know that a lot of people looked at the fight and they were just booing and carrying on. I get that, but it's like you don't know the cost of a fight. And no. what how I was watching the fight, he was yeah the way he was yeah he was throwing a lot of those like kicks because yeah he. he Romero is not is smart enough. He's a vet. He knows he's not going to go in because he knows Adesanya is. Uh, he knows his counters. So mm-hmm. I I don't think that because I mean Adesanya he's a he's a he's like a a duplicate of Anderson Silva. Fights is exactly the same kind of style. The the long uh, the long front kicks. Um, yeah, he's uh, yeah. It, I I think in that fight. I think Adesanya had a hard time because he fought a veteran. He fought a guy that knows all the – he knows the game. He knows how to play mm-hmm. the game. Um, and, I mean, Romero is just just a, a freak of an animal. He is just yeah. insane. Like, I, I'm just – I would never – I would – that that guy, you better – you better if you if – He's a scary uh, that, individual. Yeah. He, he for sure he a very not, scary uh, individual. <laughs> <laughs> you better not owe that guy money. So. No. No, but, uh, yeah, and it, yeah, it's one of those like you can't, you can't make a like the like I said the margin for error is so small when you get guys that hit as hard as him. It's so explosive, like Romero, where like he's kind of like sitting there just like lulling you asleep, and as soon as you like slip on him, like man, he explodes with a big knee or a big overhand, and yeah. if he lands, man, you're in trouble. So like, yeah, it's but then you got like the the Costa Romero fight where mm-hmm. they both are like, Hey, we both got power. They just went after it, man. That was fun oh watching. And that stuff, was so just, that fight was something else. Holy yeah, shit. Yeah. That I was impressed uh, with, with him on that fight. I wasn't really on the hype train yet, but he definitely won me over on that fight. I was impressed. Yeah. Costa. He's, I think with Costa though, how I see what's going to happen with Israel. Uh, I, I don't like a lot of people like are talking on social media and they're like, he's just going to run in and he's just going to try to take it out of saying his head off. He knows, he knows like he's not he's stupid, smarter than that. No. but I think what's going to happen is he's going to, they're going to feel it out for the first minute or two. And he's just going to start throwing bombs. And then Adesanya, he's not, I think Adesanya's going to, uh, I think he's going to keep it, you know, keep it out and open. And he, I think what he's, like I find he likes to kind of keep on the side. So if he can kind of, uh, if he can kind of uh, shoulder a couple of those punches, kind of like mm-hmm. keep out of the way, uh, tire the guy out a little bit. Uh, I think second round is where you're going to see Adesanya really start pick some of his, maybe some uh, straight punches, maybe some of the straight sh- uh, punches that he does um, and really piece up, uh, piece up the guy a little bit. And, uh, and then round three, we'll see. By round three, we'll kind of see where cost is going to stand with that gas tank. And uh, yeah, I agree. And, I agree. And then I, if, but by round three, if cost is start tiring out, I it's going to be a long night for him. Yeah, uh, I think uh, I think whoever is able to control the range and control the angles is going to be a huge yes. thing in this fight because if 
if Costa can can have a you know that more boxer range and mm-hmm. uh, you know and and set his big shots up by the angles and stuff and not letting uh, Adesanya kind of escape and stuff. So if he can control the angles and, and close that range up, he's going to yeah. do well. And if uh, yeah, if Izzy can can get that the kickboxer range that real long, keeping his using his legs a lot and staying on the outside and where he can still escape the angles if. Uh, if Costa comes in, like I, yeah, I think the the range and angles is gonna be a big, big tell in this uh in this fight for sure. Oh, one hundred percent. Um, and then just kind of uh, you know, one of your teammates, obviously Megan Anderson, she's uh mm-hmm. got a big fight with Nunes. Have you have you been facilitating her training at all for that fight or? Uh, not really. I mean, it's you know, uh, Kraus is pretty much her main, okay. her main, uh, her main coach and stuff, and runs her thing. Mm-hmm. Obviously, I mean, I'm. Anytime I'm there, I, I I will help her with anything. I mean, I've I've had moments where I help her like wall wrestling, all kinds of stuff. But uh, I mean, you know, she's been a teammate for a long time, and she she works so hard. Like, I mean, it's the the truth of this is it's a very light division. There's not a lot of depth, and dude, yeah. she's one of the she. I mean, but at that weight class, like, it's not her fault that there's not a there's not a lot of other girls in that weight class. But she's one yeah. of the best in the world in the weight class. Dude, she hits so hard. Uh, that girl's got power. Man, I like you can never count her out because if she lands, you're in trouble, and I don't care who you are. But well, it's, and, uh, I don't know, yeah. it's a tough fight. No, I mean, yeah, like she has she has her hands full with Nunes. She's you know one of the best women to ever do it. Uh, but I definitely think she you know she deserves this shot, and uh, and I don't think you can just straight count her out because she's well rounded. Uh, man, she she ha- like she works her ass off, and like I said, she's got the power where if she connects, like you're you're going to be in trouble and stuff and she can start taking stuff advantage but it's it's definitely a tough fight like don't get me wrong yeah and and i mean with Nunes, it's it's been proven she she can get cracked and i mm-hmm. mean she was in trouble with that uh i think it was her last no it wasn't her last fight because that was felicia spencer which yeah. i i i turned it off because i was just i felt so bad for the girl but um that the yeah. one before jermaine well jermaine I know, jermaine, jermaine who jermaine is a phenomenal striker oh my and, god and you saw nunez you know start grappling more with her yeah and honestly if i if i'm guessing i'm gonna i don't know how much amanda is really going to to stand with uh, with megan either i can really see her maybe at the beginning but I, if she thinks that she can out grapple her i think she'll she might try to go that route but yeah. I, mean, I could be wrong but that would i think be the smartest decision but i don't know we'll see yeah, and and we'll definitely have to see how that fight plays out. Mm-hmm. I I'm not counting out Megan either. Um, yeah, it's whether Megan can take the power from from a Nunes, and I yeah, think that's sure. what a lot of girls are having a problem with is Nunes and her power. Is that's the problem is that the way she hits girls and puts them out. I mean, after she put out um, Cyborg, that's when it it cemented like legitimacy of i was like okay shit like this girl's yeah. for real she ain't no, fucking I agree. around and like i said um, megan's, megan's the same way with the power man like yeah like, i feel like females like facial structure just isn't built to withstand that kind of power that like cyborg and yeah. nunez and megan have like yeah uh, so I, yeah i mean I, I feel like it's a, who's gonna be able to land that clean shot first you know and she's it's long a big deal for sure yeah oh for sure and yeah, she's, she's long real too long, real long and, fights uh, really long yeah, so and I think that might give her a bit of an advantage, but and that's where I think and what, what you're mentioning about Nunez is I, it, there's a possibility she might try to use that wrestling because she knows right now she's not risking trying to d- use that dirty boxing to get in 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 the in, you know in the inside because she's no she's gonna yeah. get touched up. Um, so it, it's gonna be interesting. I mean, I don't think Nunez has ever really dealt with a reach that uh, that Megan has. I don't. Yeah, think. yeah. I don't know. I don't Most know. of her opponents I mean, been pretty. Jermaine doesn't Jermaine have a, was... a long reach, but she can fight long. Like she, yeah. just, her technique is so good that you know she's able to uh, attack from a long range. But yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, I guarantee, though, if Jermaine kept that fight on the feet. She would have finished Nunes. Oh, I, she, I, I saw she's one it. Of the best, she's one of the best kickboxers in the game who's ever 100%. done it on, on female for sure, man. Jermaine is phenomenal. You know, it's just trying to catch up the rest of her game to her striking. But, mm. man, she's got power. She's got – she's so slick. Uh, okay. Yeah, I don't know. I'd, re- uh, I'd really like to see uh, – I mean, she'd have to go with the, the 35, I guess. But I'd really like to see, like, Shevchenko 
and Jermaine fight. That'd be kind of fun. That would be a fun fight too. Uh, Shevchenko too. She's uh, she's damn good. She's damn too. good too. Yeah, yeah tough. Too. Damn she good. I've never phenomenal. seen her in a fight where she's really got her ass whooped. Like she's oh. yeah, she lost a decision with Nunes, but that's really yeah. her only yeah, loss. Yeah, it was questionable. <laughs> like it was, she's in the fight for sure. Yeah. So it's. So uh, it's uh, yeah, yeah, I truly feel like she's the best that, that's done it on the female side. But, mm-hmm. you know, just now knowing, like, she's a 25-er, you know, she's over here fighting the 45 champ. <laughs> you know, and she could probably drop down to 15, you know. So, yeah, it's it's crazy. But, uh, but yeah, I don't know, man. I'm excited for Megan for getting the opportunity. I think she deserves the opportunity. It's a tough fight. I mean, it could they could go out there and starch one another or could sit there and, and have a – you know, a five round battle. You just never really know what you're going to get, but, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, it, it's definitely no easy task, man. Nunes is phenomenal. She's one of the best to do it. And, uh, but I'm excited for it. Very excited for her to get the opportunity. 100%. Um, and just kind of focusing back on you here. Um, you know, you're, you've won three out of four, uh, your last four fights. Um, is there anyone that you, uh, that you're looking to, to fight next or any, just whoever they give you? Yeah. I mean, uh, it's, Kind of like I said, I mean, right now in this whole COVID area, it's like I can either, yeah. I'm sure I can like wait a little bit and try to get, you know, maybe a ranked guy or someone who's like right outside that ranking or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you like, you have to like wait for the right person and not have a fight and need a fight. So, uh, or you could just say, Hey, like I'm willing to step in there and fight whenever, like whoever. And, and I think yeah. at this point, like I just would rather do that. I think if, uh, now, I mean, obviously if it's one of those opponents that, that's hiring me, like that's even better. But I just really just want to get back in there and do it again, man. It's just I had a year off before the last fight, and I just kind of want to stay active. Man. I had a lot of fun training. I'm still in really good shape. Uh, weight's still good, so it's like why not just get in there and fight whoever they give me? Well, I, I know that uh, I know Mike Perry was talking about possibly moving up to heavy, or uh, middleweight. So I mean, is he give a guy? That- me. I, oh man, bro, I was begging for Perry years ago. Uh, <laughs> and he knows it too. Uh, man, it's one of those where I think I was really wanting, like the, back in the 70 days, I was really wanting to fight, I think, Ellenberger because he was ranked. Yeah. And then uh, Perry, I'm knocking him out. So, like, I literally, I messaged a matchmaker. I was like, hey, man, I think me and Perry, like, that's a, that's a brawl. I mean, let's do this. And then, you know, they're like, oh, we'll see where you guys are at. And then, like, I had the crazy, I mean, a war with Ponzinibbio. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, you yep. know, Perry had one. So, I mean, he had a really good fight with Ponce, uh, Ponce yes. Diego, too. So, it's like, dude, I, I've always thought me and Perry was, like, fireworks. Because, I mean, we both hit hard. Like, we're both down to, like, just a scrap. I would, honestly, I would love to see that fight. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a lot bigger than him. Uh, just, like, walking around-wise. You know, he didn't cut a lot for 70. So, uh, I don't know. I mean, and then we joke around. I saw him at the PI. And he was like, this dude called me out wanting to fight. And I was joking around hey that's like i respect because i respect your game and so we've always given each other a hard time man like yeah if he came in middleweight sign me up like that's that's a fight i'd take in a heartbeat <laughs> it'd be fun this is one of those where like i like perry man he is a crazy just a fun individual but he, he's authentic man like it's there's no fake with him like what oh, you see just... is like how he really is man he's such a good dude yeah. and stuff so, yeah it would be a fun fight just uh like it would be nothing but fun like I, I would be in there again, like the last fight, like smiling like crazy, just having a good time. And uh, and he's crazy. But dude, I respect him, man. I respect his game. So it's uh, if he comes a middleweight, man, sign me up. I'm the first one. Do you think uh, Do you think maybe you could start the trend again? Maybe bring your wife as your cornerman or corner no. woman? <laughs> no. My, my wife is getting nowhere close to my corner. Okay, uh, fair, enough, fair enough. Yeah, my, mom, my mom's never missed a fight until this last one. Like She was like, mm-hmm. so are you putting me in my corner? Or in your corner? I was like, no. Like, there's, I'm not having my mom in my corner being like, let's go, Zach. So, uh, yeah, I'm like, sorry, man, it's not going to work. So, uh, I don't know. Yeah, not going to do it. I'm putting my professional coaches and, and teammates and people that uh, have, have sweat and bled next to me. Yes. Uh, they're, they're the ones going to go in that little battle with me for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Zach, it, it's been it's been a fun fun talking to you, and uh, yeah, for sure, it, you know, taking the time to uh, chat with me. I know you're just out on the lake, but I appreciate yes. you uh, taking your time to chat with me on here. And uh, good luck with the uh, with your you know your next fight, and uh, hope to see you soon, man. Awesome, I appreciate it, man. Thank you.